Hello, my name is Barry Croker. I play second oboe in the Pennsylvania Chamber Orchestra, and this is an oboe instructional video on the topic of knife technique for oboe reed making. This video has been produced in association with the Pennsylvania Chamber Orchestra. For more information about the PCO, please visit their website at pachamberorchestra.org. So, this is the video on knife technique. And I titled the video very specifically because I did a quick survey of some online reed making videos and it seems like most of them tend to focus on what to scrape and where to scrape it. And I'd rather talk about your basic setup, putting you in a position to scrape reeds effectively by doing the right things with your knives. I want to talk a little bit about knife sharpening technique, including the two stages, grinding and honing. And then we'll talk about the actual knife scraping uh, techniques that you can use to get the cane off wherever you want to take it off. And then we'll uh, spend a little bit of time at the end actually just working on reeds. Is it going to be different than some videos you'll find online because, again, we're more interested in your setup, getting you in a position so you can scrape however you want to scrape as effectively as you can. So let's talk about the tools first. I have three reed knives. The uh, first one I've just gone back to using uh, recently. This is one of the first ones I ever owned, bought it in college, and it is a what they call a beveled knife. So if you look at that, you'll see that there is a flat plane and then there is a slanted plane at the bottom and they meet to form a point of the knife. That's a very effective knife for remaking. However, my favorite knives are what they call double hollow ground. Instead of uh, blade surfaces that are flat and come together like this, they are scooped out, uh, concave, we would say, concave. And uh, I find that a little easier just to keep the knives sharp, frankly. And it's a little bit easier for the, the uh, knife grinding process as well. So a double hollow ground knife is generally favored, I would say, for reed making. But the beveled knives have uses, and that's one of the reasons why I've, I've come back to it recently. Uh, here's one example of a double hollow ground. Hopefully you can see that uh, concave shape on both sides. And of course the two blades, the two sides of the knife blade still come together to a very thin point and that's what cuts the cane. This is a Landwell knife. Landwell is a, or, excuse me, sorry, this is a Nielsen knife. Edmund Nielsen Woodwind. I uh, met Mrs. Nielsen, Dorothy Nielsen, when I studied oboe outside of Chicago back in the uh, late 70s. They've since moved the company to Arizona, but they're still doing a brisk business, and I recommend their products, which I don't often do. Uh, we also have here a Landwell knife. I've heard this is the gold standard in oboe reed knives. I've, I use it for all my finishing work. I really like it. It's another double hollow ground knife. It has the same kind of scooped out shape with the metal. And very easy to maintain and sharpen and it retains its edge well, so I like that. All right, well, now that you've seen a little bit of the tools, the knives, I should say, let me show you a couple other tools. I'm gonna reorient the camera. Uh, we have this, and we have this. This is a diamond sharpening stone. It's used in the oboe grinding process, the oboe reed knife grinding process. This is when you're actually taking metal off the knife in preparation for your final honing. I do this grinding occasionally and I do it with the blades flat generally. Sometimes with some knives I have to cheat a little bit but essentially you're sliding the flat surface of the knife plane along the diamond stone with a very firm pressure and you can probably hear that I am trying with that pressure to remove metal from the knife. And you can actually see that because 
and take a relatively clean napkin here. Like across the knife, you can see there's uh, quite a bit of dirt on there from the knife. So uh, that's just metal shavings coming off the knife. Knife shows me I'm doing the grinding properly. I'm removing metal from the knife. And I've already done some uh, grinding on this, so I don't have to spend a lot of time on the video doing it. I want to do the other side of the knife. Same principle. Putting a lot of weight on the end of the knife with both hands, the edge of the knife. I'm just trying to remove metal. That's the grinding. Once we have essentially ground off the planes of the knife and hopefully we've gotten both planes to a very very sharp point then we're ready to begin the honing process and for that portion of the reed sharp reed knife sharpening i use these sharpening sticks i've used these for probably 30 40 years now they don't ever seem to lose their effectiveness. This is just called sharpening sticks. You can probably find them online. I looked a while ago and I found they were still being manufactured. So get yourself a pair. And the way we use the sharpening stick is a little bit different than the way we do the grinding process. For the, sh for the uh, honing process, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take that knife point and we're trying to essentially bend it over a little bit to create a little bit of a curl at the end of that knife blade. This is microscopic, you can just barely feel it and I'll show you how to test for it in a couple minutes. But basically you're trying to bend over the edge of the knife in the direction that you're going to be uh, pushing the knife blade when you're scraping. So if you could imagine an ocean wave for instance beginning to curl is going to break over that surfer. That's what we're trying to do with the knife blade. Just take that edge over a little bit. So we really uh, want to get that curl on the edge of that wave just perfect so you can cut very, very easily. So again, we're trying to set you up so you don't have to work hard to do reed scraping. So the way I do the honing is I use the sharpening sticks and I'm going to put the knife blade at about a 30 degree angle for this. And I'm going to use a fairly light motion down the sharpening stick. The key is to make sure that every point on the knife blade is making contact with, this, with the sharpening stick. And then when I'm ready for my final few strokes, I'm going to put them all on the side that I want to bend the knife blade toward that piece of can I'm going to be scraping. And what I'm doing right now is I'm testing. I'm feeling for the burr of the knife blade. If you rub your finger very, very gently across the knife, not down the knife, you don't want to cut our finger, but just brush it against that tip, you will actually be able to feel that burr. And when it's more pronounced, it'll just feel fuzzy. That's the best way to describe it. Another test I can use to see if the burr, and you probably won't feel it on this side as much because this side is the opposite side and we were bending the wave the other way. What we're trying to do is to get a knife blade that's so sharp that if you just set the weight of the knife on your fingernail, it will catch and won't easily slide. Again, be careful, don't cut yourself because you're creating a very sharp cutting implement here. Just a light pressure should catch the knife. And I test all the way down the knife blade just to see if I can feel that. But this is a fairly sharp knife now. It's, it's feeling pretty good to me. I can rub it gently down my thumb too and you actually feel the burr catching on the ridges of your fingerprint 
So that's when you know you've got a knife blade edge that you can use. I'll do the same thing with this Lamwell knife. A few gentle strokes, just uh, sort of working the point. And then when I'm ready, you may wonder why I'm going on both sides. Uh, one way is sort of taking the burr off. The other way is putting the burr on. And when I get it just right, I can usually feel it pretty well. Okay, starting to get that now. It's a little bit boring for video. Sorry about that. But this is actually a very important part of your remaking process because if you get your knife blade sharp enough, it'll make everything else easier. Okay, we talked about grinding and honing. <clears throat> Let's talk about knife scraping. There are two essential movements that I use. The first is a wrist rotation. The second is a thumb push. The wrist rotation is when you actually want to work on a fairly small portion of the reed. And you want to be careful when you're scraping to not really bring the knife blade beyond perpendicular. What I mean by that is, if you can see here, if I'm going to be scraping down toward the end of this reed, I don't want to turn the knife blade, the knife blade edge, past a certain point because what will happen is it, it'll just rip the cane out and you'll end up taking a chunk out of your finished reed, which is not very pleasant. However, if you use, if you bring the knife blade back toward the back of the reed and then only bring it forward till it's perpendicular, you can see that on the video. And it's, it's a safer way to scrape. I ruined many reeds before I figured this out. So I try to be very careful about not pushing the knife blade past perpendicular, not finishing up this way, but finishing up this way. So we start here, we go to here. Start here, go to here. Not start here, go here. See the difference? This is not good. This is good. So the thumb push, what are we talking about there? Now I'm talking about using the knife as if it were a carpenter's plane. So let's just use a reed blank to illustrate this technique. And let's say it's time for me to lay in the back of the reed. What I want to do in the case of I'm trying to push the knife over a long area of the cane is I'm going to push with the thumb. So the thumb sort of comes back and then pushes the knife forward. You can rock the knife blade a little bit with the wrist if you want, but it's primarily a push with the thumb to enable you to take a nice long stroke as if you were a carpenter just sliding the plane across the surface of the wood. That's the idea with this thumb push. It's not so much a wrist rotation anymore. That's more for fine work in a particular area of the reed. But for longer scrapes, you want to push with the thumb. And I'm not sure how well this will come out of the video, but I'll just start here. Remember, when you're laying in the back of the reed, you always want to leave the central portion of the spine. I'll just count strokes. I always count my strokes. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put ten about on both sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Another thing I want to show you is if we zoom in over here, I'm not sure if this is going to come out at all, 
but if you look at my knife shavings, they're filled, they're all little curls of cane. That's a good sign. That means my knife is sharpened properly. So I think we're in a pretty good place with this knife. I like the way it feels. It's taking off the cane smoothly and the curls we like. And uh, hopefully if you, if you use this grinding and honing technique yourself, you'll find it's much easier to scrape on your reeds. Thank you for your attention and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video.